Now, I will admit my guilt here. I'm guilty of this too. I ignore the cannon. Uh, when I think of the Eurofighter Typhoon's armaments, I think of uh, bombs, missiles. For any modern plane, really. I think of countermeasures before I consider the cannon. Yes, the cannon, it's really underappreciated. It's really useful in a very specific scenario. Hugely important. Imagine the Typhoon gets into that moment. A really close dogfight. The enemy plane is right in front of it, literally right there. The pilot lines up the SRAAM, Short Range Air to Air Missile, and the theme from Top Gun is probably playing, as it often does. And let's say the missile somehow manages to fire and hit the target. Well, that's great. The enemy fighter is destroyed. But the missile fragments, despite their excellent sort of explosive direction, probably also fly at the Typhoon. And now the cockpit is damaged and all hope is lost. The pilot has one of three choices. Go home, somehow, in a wrecked plane, which costs rather a lot of money to fix. Um, eject, which costs rather a lot of money because the entire plane is destroyed. Or crash, which is awful in both circumstances, both monetarily and, more importantly, in human life. Now, let's say the enemy fighter is right in front of our pilot. The same scenario. A missile isn't going to have, let's say, enough time to build up ample speed to really strike the plane in front. And what that means is that while the projectile has brilliant blast direction, it's probably not going to have the kinetic energy to deliver its full capacity payload, or at least the full power of the payload, given that it's not having the proper kinetic lineup. And what this means is that it's actually more likely to hit our guy, and less likely to do proper damage to the enemy plane, still leave it in the air, and likely injure uh, the plane of our guy, break it. Now, perhaps imagine, again, our pilot is in the same situation, the enemy plane's right in front of him, and he's out of missiles. Now, we need an option in this scenario, a last resort, because it's important to have. There has to be a plan B. This is where the cannon comes in. Now, he's out of missiles, and he selects his cannon. And we often think of this being the least powerful weapon system, and perhaps that is the case. But that doesn't mean it's not powerful. He selects his cannon on his, uh, I guess, dashboard, and uses the H HUD to line up the shot. And when he unleashes the trigger me mechanism, he unleashes a potential of 28 rounds of 27mm caliber, either high explosive or frangible armor-piercing shells in a single second to destroy the enemy fighter. <clears throat> Let me say again, 28 rounds in a second of high explosive or frangible armor-piercing shells that are 27mm caliber. Now, just for those of you who want to know, that's 27mm by 145mm. That pierces properly. The Typhoon utilises the German Mauser BK-47 revolver cannon, and it's important for the reason I just said, both as a last resort and at close range. It's hugely important because if one is ever in that situation, then there is effectively an easy way to win, an easy chance of success, which is to shoot down the enemy plane, then it must be taken. You cannot compromise mission capability because you think you're above a cannon. Mauser, as you know, the ones who make the system, are now a part of Rheinmetall. Uh, the Mauser BK-27 is a gas-operated cannon, and it you know, largely focuses on this rather <clears throat> than perhaps employing more powered elements. As I said, it fires the 27mm caliber rounds, that's 27mm by 145mm, so it's a rather long round. Uh, and it can travel, I believe, at 1,100 meters per second, which is, you know, plenty fast to catch up with the plane in front. Each round weighs about 1.14 pounds, dependent on whether it's explosive or armor-piercing frangible, and the projectile itself the actual round that comes out weighs about 9 ounces, again dependent on what particularly it is. The cannon has been improved over the years. It's been equipped on multiple planes. It was developed, I believe, the late 1970s, I think 1976, I'm not sure, 
But it's been used on multiple aircraft. The Tornado, the Saab Gripen, the Panavia Tornado, that is. Uh, and, of course, the Typhoon. Now, how it's improved over time is that both the Saab and the Tornado uh, require a certain type of feed system, which has a lot of complex links, whereas the Typhoon uses a linkless feed system. This makes it vastly more reliable, and that's a very positive thing. That means it's less likely to fail. What it's described as the Mauser BK-27, an enormous cannon, it's single barrel, high performance, and a breech cylinder. Uh, uh, cylindrical breech cylinder, I think. So the breech cylinder that it has is effectively, it, it maximizes the ability of the system to close the entrance to the ammunition load, and that basically means that you have maximum explosive performance. Uh, you have maximum projectile, I guess, speed, muzzle power, as it were. It's fully electrically fired, but fully gas operated. What that means is that there are no springs in the entire thing. It's electrically fired, as I said, which means that you have maximum efficiency, maximum guarantee uh, in using non-mechanical stuff that can jam, that can rust, that can have mechanical failure. And the gas operation means that one doesn't require the mechanics of springs. Now, with this gas uh, operation, it utilizes something called uh, pyrotechnic cocking charge. Now, what that means is it's unpowered. Uh, so you see cannons that are on other planes, like the Vulcan cannon, that utilized uh, that utilized more powered uh, cocking, which can be an issue because if you have some sort of you know miniature electrical failure, then that's a bit of an issue. You need to rely upon the forces that are going to perform the best at all times in an automatic sense that require the least maintenance. So the pyrotechnic cocking charge you, is it's unpowered. It's automatic recocking, uh, and this is something that can be done mid-flight, either to charge the cannon or an action to be taken if there is a misfire. And that's actually hugely important because it means that it requires minimal maintenance. It requires minimal, I guess you'd say, systems in order to run it. It can be taken advantage of in that situation very, very quickly. There's little calibration that's needed beforehand. And so when our pilot is in that situation, when the Top Gun theme is playing and the enemy is right in front of him, he can take the shot and he can rely on the BK-27 Mauser revolver cannon. And that's important, as I say. So, moral of the story, don't forget the cannon.